I will charge our 600A gas in this refrigerator, but before we charge Freon in this refrigerator, the refrigerant in this refrigerator leaked out. So first, I will tell you how to find and fix the leak in a refrigerator and then charge the refrigerant. It is a frost-free refrigerator. First, I will try to find the leak in its evaporator, if it has one. Second, it has some pipes on the back side of the refrigerator where the compressor is installed. The rest of the condenser pipes are packed and sealed inside the body of this refrigerator. The chances of leakage in those pipes are minimum. The leakage could be here on these pipes or the evaporator of this refrigerator. Whenever the gas leaks from the refrigerator evaporator or any refrigeration system, you should find traces of oil on the pipes because when the gas leaks, oil also comes out from that specific leaked area of the refrigerator pipe. This way, you can quickly and easily analyze which area of the refrigerator has a hole in the gas leaked in the first step. But if you cannot find the leak in the evaporator of the frost-free refrigerator, then remove the evaporator from the freezer. Next, pass the gas pressure of nitrogen or any other high-pressure gas inside the evaporator and sink the evaporator inside the water. This way, you can test the leak of the evaporator. I didn't find any leak here, whereas the leak is on the back side of the refrigerator. Now let me explain where the leakage is on the back side of the refrigerator. And what caused the leak? This water collection tray is installed on top of the compressor, which is installed inside every refrigerator, as this refrigerator is frost free and has only a single evaporator. Therefore, when the fridge defrost system is working, that defrosted water is collected in this tray. In case the water gets above the level of the tray and starts coming out of the tray. Then for this, the company passed the discharge pipe through the tray. As you can see, it is passing through the tray. A coil has been made inside the tray. And then the pipe is entering inside the body of the refrigerator. When the water is gathered in it, it has two benefits, the water vapors out of the tray in the air. This eases us that we don't need to remove water ourselves. The second benefit is this when the gas flows in the discharge pipe. The need is to cool the discharge line, as the company has passed the discharge pipe through the tray. This also helps the discharge line to cool down, improving refrigerator cooling performance. Now let me explain the problem in this refrigerator by removing this tray from the compressor. After removing the tray, this pipe has a cover on top of it. You can see the metal pipe here, the rest of the tube is covered with heat shrink. As you can see, this pipe area seems to be damaged. And the leak seems to be in this area of the pipe. I have cleaned this pipe. I saw traces of oil here. The tray also had oil inside it. As the pipe is leaked, it could be possible that the water could have gone inside the refrigeration system. As nitrogen is a dry gas and absorbs moisture. The pressure we will pass inside the refrigerator pipes will be very low. If we pass high pressure gas into the refrigerator pipes, this evaporator is made of aluminum which could get damaged. That's why we will be careful. I will pass 60 to 70 pounds per square inch inside the refrigerator pipes. Now I have removed the heat shrink from the damaged area of the pipe, and you can see that the pipe is completely rusted. The oil has also leaked from this pipe. Now I will cut the rusted pipe. I am also opening the suction pipe because I have to make the air out of this system. This is the nitrogen cylinder that I have attached to the refrigerator system. I have flushed the system now and passed nitrogen inside the pipes for 20 minutes at low pressure. This will make the water dry out if any drop is present inside the refrigerator. I have covered the heat shrink above the copper pipe. After covering it with heat shrink, I will heat the pipe, making the heat shrink stick to the pipe. Heat the pipe this way with the heat gun, and it will stick to the pipe. I have brazed this pipe as well and covered the pipe with the heat shrink as well. But before this, I will cover the copper pipe with adhesive tape because this heat shrink is thick. See, I have tapped the pipe. Now I am covering this pipe with the heat shrink as well. Now I have brazed all the pipes which I had separated. The leak in the refrigerator is vanished now. 
Now I will charge our 600 A Freon in this refrigerator, which is a flammable gas, so I will charge this gas very safely. Now let me give you a suggestion here. If you are not an expert in brazing, then perform the procedure using a charging line and close the pipe. Now I will vacuum the system and start charging the R600A gas in the refrigerator. Now the manifold gauge needle is pointing out that the system has been vacuumed, which is 29.92 Hg atmospheric pressure, which means the system is perfectly vacuumed. If I see the company's specification, it is written that 55 grams of gas should be charged in this refrigerator. We have this cylinder of our 600A gas which will be charged in the refrigerator. We will charge the Freon by weight as mentioned by the company. We can charge the gas with two methods. The first method is to start the compressor and charge the gas bit by bit. The second method is that charge the total amount of gas mentioned in the refrigerator by weight and then start the compressor. So, we will use the second method. I will charge the liquid in the refrigerator and then start the compressor after half an hour. In this half an hour, the liquid I charged will be converted to vapors. I will purge the gas first before charging the Freon inside the refrigerator. Because the air is inside the pipe, I am taking the air out of the pipe. After doing this, I am closing the nut. The weight of the cylinder is 260 grams. I have to charge 55 grams in the refrigerator. Now I have started to charge the Freon, and I will take the cylinder in my hand to charge the liquid inside it. Now I will close the nut of the manifold gauge. The weight of the cylinder is 227 grams after we charge the gas, which means 33 grams of Freon has been charged inside the refrigerator. I will charge the rest of the gas slowly because the refrigerator was not taking more than this. After the gas is charged, let me show you then how to braze the pipes with our 600A gas inside the refrigerator. Now the weight of the cylinder is 206 grams which means we have charged 54 grams of Freon inside the refrigerator. The manifold is showing us 10 Hg pressure. And the refrigerator consumes 0.5 amperes of electricity. The PCB board of the refrigerator is also working. The condenser piping is getting hot. And the complete system is working fine. Now I will braze the pipe. So you have to use a 22 gauge pipe for charging the R600A gas in the refrigerator. You should have two of the locking pinch off pliers. If you don't have two of them, then it would be better not to braze the pipes as R600A gas is flammable. The standing pressure of the gas has also raised, which is above zero, as you can see. Now I will punch the first side of the pipe with the plier. Then remove the pin inside the access valve. Then use the second plier to punch the pipe. Before brazing the pipe, the last work you have to do is to cut this pipe. Punch the pipe from the end using the plier. Then use foam to check the leak of the gas. We have no leakage. While brazing the pipe, you need to be careful with your position. The flow of the fire should be outwards. See, our position is fine here while I am brazing the pipe. See. The brazing of this pipe has been successfully completed. The refrigerator is now ready to go back to the owner. This is for today's video. I will see you at the next one. Click on the left or right thumbnail on the screen to watch our next video, and subscribe. It will be really appreciable. Thank you.